Hello everyone, as the year winds down, I just wanted to go ahead and start my top 10 of 2016 series. So I'm going to cover hair, fragrance and body, as well as of course makeup and skincare. But today the first installment will be dedicated to my hair because I have never tried in my life before so many hair products in one calendar year. And I do have my favorites, some of which you have already heard about, some of which are fairly new to my collection ever since I have started playing more with my short hair. Now, I did mention in my last video that I will be getting an A-line cut very soon. As my hair is growing out, the reason why I've been curling it a little bit more is because it's starting to hit an awkward length, so I am going to trim it into an A-line style bob so that it grows out into a full-on lob. I'm hoping that will look a little bit more stylish, especially because this is the kind of length that I had dreaded the most when I decided to commit to short hair. But anyway, let's get to the point because I have a lot of products to share with you. First of which is a multi-use product. You can use this on damp hair or dry hair. I prefer to use it on wet hair just as I hop out of the shower because my scalp has been feeling a little bit more dry recently. And that's just because the weather is changing. It's getting a lot colder here in Southern California. So sometimes my scalp does have a very, very slight tendency to peel, especially if I'm using a lot of dry shampoo. So this is the brand new Kenra Platinum Snail CC Cream, which is actually a 10-in-1 anti-aging product for for your hair. The logic behind snail essence is that it is a potent anti-aging ingredient. I like the packaging because it's easy to use. It has this clear pump here, as you can see, and it's pretty generous. I normally use about two to three pumps depending on how dry my hair is feeling. So this product is supposed to help with dulling, thinning, breakage, frizz, dryness, elasticity, porosity, scalp irritation, unmanageability, and coarse texture. I do think it delivers on all fronts and you can get this exclusively at at Ulta. For 25 bucks, you're getting a really good amount of product. It's a total of 2.5 fluid ounces, and I think this will last me with daily use probably at least a few months. I was a little confused when I heard of this CC cream because I thought, why is a hair company making a base makeup product? But the whole point of calling it a CC cream is because just like one that you would put on your face, this is supposed to improve the look and feel of your hair over time. I did have some reservations about it before I used it, just because of the name, but it actually is a really good product. Now something else that I use while my hair is wet is the Miriam Cavetto Platinum and Diamonds the Volume Luxurious Serum. I talked about this pretty recently. I bought it at Space NK after trying a sample of it and I absolutely love this for volume. So most of the time I'll put this in the crown of my head only just because it is very expensive. It's much more expensive than the Kenra but these two I like to use when my hair is damp right before I blow dry. So I'll put this just in the back section here where my hair is the flattest whereas the Kenra because my scalp is dry. I like to put it towards the front here and around the sides of my hair right here where any kind of scalp irritation and dryness is a little bit more noticeable. And just like with the Kenra, I do use two pumps of this. Sometimes I'll use three if my hair is feeling especially flat, but just to make it more cost effective, I try to stick to two pumps. Now for the shampoo that I've raved about before and I'm going to talk about it again. This is actually a scrub. It's a cleansing purifying scrub with sea salt. This is kind of the same concept as a cleansing oil. You you put it into your hair and then you emulsify it by adding a little bit of water and then massaging your scalp. This is meant for sensitive or oily scalps, but I love it because it's super, super clarifying and even though it dries out my hair just a little bit, it is really good for my scalp. I've been dedicated to this for the whole year. This is probably my third or fourth tub and I just, I can't rave enough about it. I've tried so many shampoos over the year, but nothing really compares to this one and I only wash my hair every other day nowadays. Even even though I don't have colored hair anymore. I did use Orbe a lot, the color shampoo, when I had colored hair. Now that I don't need that anymore, I only really use the Kristoff. Now for my conditioners. I switch off between two depending on how dry my hair is. Most of the time I use the Kiehl's Wheat Rice and Wheat Volumizing Conditioning Rinse. So this is not a conditioner because it's very, very lightweight. And I wouldn't say that my hair appears fuller as advertised, but it definitely helps from my hair being weighed down. After using the clarifying scrub, 
job, sometimes my hair is a little bit tangled, so it helps to get all of the rough spots out without making my hair a little too soft. Now, once or twice a week, I will use the damage repairing and rehydrating conditioner from Kiehl's. This was a random purchase at Nordstrom. I just randomly swung by and thought, oh, this smells really, really good. So a lot of the times, the hair care that I like smells fresh, but light and not overpowering. I don't like things to interfere with my perfume. This conditioner is advertised for damaged, very dry hair, and at the time, I had just cut my hair off, so I still have some bleached ends from my purple hair days right before I chopped it all off. So I had very high hopes for this one, and I love it. It is a very creamy, rich formula, but it doesn't weigh my hair down, and I only use it right at the end. So whenever I've styled my hair a couple days in a row, I definitely reach for this one as opposed to the volumizing rinse. I think Kiehl's makes really good, really underrated hair products, and they're a lot more affordable than brands like Orbe, so I highly recommend them. I do think that their conditioners are significantly better than their shampoos, but it really just depends on your hair type. Now for split ends. I was using Orbe's split end mender for a long time, and I realized that Kerastase's Fiber Architect, this renovating dual serum, is so much better. Not only do I love the way this smells, it's bright, it's refreshing, and it has kind of like a citrusy hint. I've tried other products in this lineup, and I also really like the cream version, but this serum is so nice. I've noticed that after cutting my hair and styling it a lot more, my hair is a little bit more stressed out because I'm not used to curling it this often anymore, but this helps a lot and I haven't seen any split ends. Even though I don't use as much Kerastase as I used to, I highly recommend this one. I only use about three or four pumps and it gets all of my ends. They don't look or feel greasy because this lightweight serum absorbs extra quickly and it kind of leaves a silky feel, but it doesn't feel like you have too much product in it. I just don't like it when my hair is weighed down by all these different kinds of products that I'm putting in my hair, which is why I need the clarifying scrub from Christophe Robin, but I think that out of all the split end menders I've ever tried, this Kerastase one is the very best. Now we have the Kenra Blow Dry Spray, which was introduced to me a very long time ago, but I started using it again when my friend Kat Park, who did my purple hair recently, earlier this year, uh, she put this in my hair before she blow dried and styled it, and I just remembered how much I loved it. So she gifted this to me because I couldn't find my own. I like how compact and portable it is, so I will travel with this one or throw it in my gym bag if I need to do my hair on the go. Now, they are both heat protectants. It just depends on what you're looking for because this one really does cut down on blow dry time. Although the Kerastase is a heat protectant, only the Kenra cuts down on the blow dry and makes it a lot faster. Now, this is the Whey hair oil. This is probably the most recent thing that I have discovered. And overall, I, I do like the Whey concept. I think Jen Atkin is a great celebrity stylist. If you didn't know, she works with a bunch of celebs like Alicia Keys and the Kardashians but basically what it comes down to is how good the product is. I haven't tried much from her line, but the hair oil is excellent. I've used Shiomura's Absolute Oil for a very long time, for years, but it is a little bit thicker, so I have to spread it in my palms and between my fingers, and I have to warm it up before I can put it in my hair. The Whey is a lot thinner in formula. It's kind of runny almost, but it makes a great finishing oil. Anytime I get frizz from straightening my hair like this, or curling my hair like this. I do have to use a hair oil to kind of tame it, otherwise the hair kind of just flips out in multiple directions. This helps keep the ends straighter and still look PC without looking dry. Now for the battle of the dry shampoos. So I love the Moroccan oil dry shampoo in the dark tones. It is a soft, silky finish as advertised, and I like that it doesn't make my hair look kind of like powdery, and it doesn't feel powdery, which is the most important aspect for me. Even though I wish I could prolong the time between washing, I don't like to wait too long because ultimately, I don't like to have a hair full of product, and even though it looks clean, I don't like it when my hair feels dirty. I actually buy the mini versions from Nordstrom and Sephora to stick inside my purses and my, my carry-on travel bags, just because I do like a fresher upper, and it doesn't have a super strong scent. Now, I did try the Batiste recently, I bought it at Target because so many people were raving about it. I put it in my hair today and around the roots and stuff, and it just 
mutilated my brushes. I was trying to brush it out neatly and it just covered my Ibiza brush in this white residue. So I understand that it's really affordable, but I just don't like it. It's kind of frustrating to try to sit there and rub it in thoroughly and then have to brush it. It doesn't give me any volume and the results weren't anything like what I expected based on the rave reviews. And I think Moroccan oils dry shampoo is really underrated. I don't hear a lot of people talk about it, but as far as the dark tones go, it's super easy to absorb. It really does help with odor or greasiness, so I highly, highly recommend this one. There is, in my personal opinion, no better dry shampoo for dark hair. Last but not least, this is the only Orbe product that I use almost every single day. As much as I love Orbe as a brand, the thick, dry finishing spray is the only one that I'm dedicated to now that I have short hair. And I'm almost out of my second bottle. This stuff is amazing. I didn't use it today because I was testing out the Batiste, but it gives my hair volume and life. It smells pretty good. It's kind of like a cross between a dry shampoo and a very, very sheer hairspray. It kind of gives it a soft structure, a little bit of volume, and that really does help my hairstyle last a little bit longer for like an hour or two at the end of the day. And that, ladies and gentlemen, wraps up my top 10 for 2016 in the hair category. If you have any questions about the products that I talked about today, please feel free to reach out to me on Instagram or Twitter. I will go ahead and post probably the skincare one next, unless I receive a lot of requests for the makeup, and I will do my very best to accommodate your requests. Thank you guys so much for tuning in, and I'll see you all very soon. Bye.